potential meter is our topic and last time we were we have started this topic and we had a concept that potential meter is a mean of comparing potential difference so this is the idea that voltmeter is never very accurate so even voltmeter is present we develop a concept of potential meter potential meter is something which comes in mcqs it's a topic actually it, this topic is potential divider and it works on the principle of uh, uh, null method we had a concept that this is a potential meter and this is a slider we move the slider forward we move the slider backward and the pd on the terminals mn will change when the slider moves we had we had a ratio formula vpq upon vpx is equal to lpq upon lpx it's a ratio based formula and last time we had uh, discussed this so you have to see last thing i think you left early last time so but still you can see how much we did you did last time yeah, we did to somewhere around here i remember So you have to see the last figure you have so we can connect from that point i think this was the figure So this is our potential divider when the slider is moved forward and backward when the slider is moved forward and backward the pd across the terminals mn the pd across the terminal mn will change our target is to get a position our target is to get a position where the slider is moved and the galvanometer shows zero so you have to look at this diagram if, if this diagram is there update it and if it's not there you have to copy this i'm then copying sir This topic is potential divider and the name of the chapter is DC circuit. Uh, Arima, you have joined, so you can check that. Uh, 
uh, have you copied this diagram? We were doing potentiometer and please also update about my homework messages. Uh, I need some homework because the topics are common uh, in the mock December exam. These topics are also coming and past paper are common. If you have done it with me or if you have done it with the school, do not do them again. But I need some work and also I have posted a quiz. I have posted two, three quizzes before also. But uh, I'm having facing problem because I'm not getting my work. So please first look at this diagram if you haven't copied it yet. Uh, so first please copy that and also please update me about the homework. Uh, it has a deadline by tomorrow. And what about the homework? Please update on that. I have two homeworks pending. You can search. You people can search the WhatsApp by writing homework. And you can see that there are two homeworks in two to three homeworks are there. And uh, I think two to three quizzes are there. Definitely everyone is preparing now for the uh, for the midterm, for the mocks, you can call it. And these are the past paper questions. No special homework. These are the past paper questions. So try to submit me some homework. This is potential divider. Now the method says that you have to move the slider forward and backward. The point is there that we need this method is called null method. Now how we, how we use potential divider in this case, we move the slider forward and backward. This is called null method. So, move the slider forward and backward. Move the slider forward and backward. Move the slider forward and backward. So copy with me until Galvanometer shows zero. This is called null method. At this point, when the look at this diagram, you have to move the slider forward and backward until the galvanometer shows zero. So when the galvanometer shows zero, at this point, stop the slider. And apply the ratio. So look at this one. This is a slider. We are moving the slider forward and backward. The slider, we, we have to stop the slider at a point. Now MN is capital V. So VPQ upon VPX is equal to LPQ upon LPX. So when the slider is, when, sorry, when the galvanometer shows zero deflection at this point, at this point, the voltage here, this voltage and this voltage, these two voltages are equal. 
This is called null method. So when you stop here, you apply the ratio. When you apply the ratio, you can find the unknown voltage. This is the method which we use. And this voltage across the terminal Px is equal to voltage across Mn. This is called potential meter method. This is our next concept for today. Whenever you make a slider circuit, this is like a loop. Whenever you make a slider circuit, which is like a loop, you will always have a problem that within the loop, there will be within the loop, the resistance always decreases. So look at this point that RPX. R, P, X, this is our position P, this is position X. R, P, X is less than R, X, Q. The resistance drops there. So whenever you make a slider connection, resistance decreases in the loop. So due to this feature, a slider, con a slider contact always changes the resistance within the loop. So due to this resistance, L upon 2 here and L upon 2 here do not follow the same resistance. That is why, look at this relation, Vpx is not equal to Vxq. This is a very important feature of every potential divider circuit. This is the, <clears throat> this is the outlook of a potentiometer. This is how a potentiometer looks like. You can see a dial on it. This is a dial which you can rotate like this. This is called a potentiometer and like the regulator of a fan, you can move it in a circle in a spinning mode and you can change the, and you can change the length of the wire intact. So this is a slider concept. Now you have to give the heading Kirchhoff loss, which are the main, which is the main topic of our chapter. Kirchhoff and potential divider, these are the two main topics. Kirchhoff is more credited, is more challenging. Give the heading Kirchhoff laws. Kirchhoff laws are the dominating laws in the analysis of circuits. Our knowledge on circuits, series, parallel, voltage difference, current distribution, they all are arising from Kirchhoff laws. We are putting, we are putting the first concept, the Kirchhoff laws are the basis of analysis of circuit. So whenever you talk about this topic, you should remember that whatever we have developed, this is only two laws behind it. One is the Ohm's law, which was dominating the last chapter, current of electricity. And second is the Kirchhoff laws. Kirchhoff laws are the basis of analysis of circuits. You have to copy this. Answer. Right. It's your first law. Give the heading, Kirchhoff first law. This is the first law. The first law is actually related with the idea that current, when it enters a position, current can be divided like uh, 
around about this is around about and current is coming from here and current is coming from here suppose it is 3 ampere and it is 2 ampere so when the current leaves from here it is equal to 5 ampere 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 ampere now there are total 5 ampere current which is leaving so kirchhoff first law says that current is like a flow of electrons when current enters a junction we call this roundabout in this topic as a junction so like vehicles entering a roundabout the total current entering a junction is equal to the total current leaving the junction we need a, a statement because this topic comes in our course in the paper they ask state kirchhoff first law first law is actually a concept of law of conservation of charge electrons The sum of the currents flowing into a point, or node, equals the sum of the currents flowing out of the node. This statement is known as Kirchhoff's first law. The sum of... So now, in a network of circuits, the total current flowing into a junction is equal to the total current flowing out of it. This is a statement. This statement comes in the paper, so you have to copy this. As the statement comes in the paper, as the statement comes in the paper, so you have to mention it, you have to memorize it. Done, sir. Right. This law is uh, an extension of conservation of charge. So look at this diagram. The current entering a junction is equal to the current leaving the junction. So after that, you have to give the heading. After this, you have to, oh, sorry, after this, you have to write that this, after writing the statement, this is the conservation of charge. This is the conservation of charge. This is the conservation of charge. Now you have to copy this screen. Current entering a junction is equal to current leaving the junction.
this law can be narrated in different possible ways. It is like a traffic rule that vehicles entering a roundabout and they are leaving. So the total number of vehicles remain the same. Now we have this heading Kirchhoff second law. Give the heading Kirchhoff second law. Kirchhoff second law is a basic law of energy conservation. Now consider that you have two resistors connected like this. And I have a circuit of 12 volt, okay? Now these are the two resistors R1 and R2. Suppose that it is getting two volt and it is getting 10 volt. If you add them, the total comes 12 volt. This is called Kirchhoff second law. It's a very simple law. The law says that the total voltages, the sum of voltages across the load resistor is equal to the voltage of the source. The sum of all the voltages, the sum of all the voltages is equal to the total voltage across a system. This is called Kirchhoff second law. I told you the concept. Again, these laws are asked to write in the paper. So now you have to copy this statement. Answer. Right. Okay, I'm taking a short namaz break and we we'll have to you people have to do a question for me and I'm just coming back. This is the question and this is related to electric current potential divider question. So please perform this question and I'm just coming back. PD across a loop. How PD is divided? PD, some voltage appear across R. Some voltage appear across small r. Small r is internal resistance. And some PD appear across the connecting wires. Kirchhoff's second law says that the sum of all the voltages will be EMF of the system. You have to copy this concept related to Kirchhoff's second law. Answer. Good. So this is the concept of Kirchhoff second law. Now look at this diagram. Internal resistance. Remember that internal resistance is a symbol 
internal resistance has a symbol small r. So when you develop a circuit, whenever you develop a circuit, you have to take a loop. Kirchhoff second law, Kirchhoff second law is always applicable to a loop, a closed loop. Now this is our closed loop circuit, and uh, look at this small r. This is the internal resistance. In the exam paper, in paper two, especially, Kirchhoff law is coming normally for equation forming. They ask you to form the equations according to Kirchhoff first law, according to Kirchhoff second law. Remember again, Kirchhoff second law is always applicable to a loop. Now voltage comes in the circuit. Some voltage goes on R1, some voltage goes on R2. If you add these two voltages and the voltage across small r, they all will sum up to E. For example, I have a loop and uh, I don't know the power of the source, but there is no internal resistance and there is no loss of voltage. Now, if this is 5 volt and this is 3 volt, what is the total voltage of the source? If one resistor is getting 5 volt, Eight, other resistor is getting 3 volt, what is the voltage of the source? 8, sir. 8. This is called Kirchhoff second law. This is necessary to remember that internal resistance is sometimes considered. Sometimes examiner overlook it. Examiner says do not consider it. What is the most important thing to understand here is the equations. Kirchhoff second law says the sum of voltages is equal to the total EMF. You have to copy this. Done, sir. Right. Now look at this equation. E is equal to IR plus IR1. Now this is the most important feature of this chapter. You have to understand this equation very strongly because this is their favorite question. How you analyze any AS topic like potential divider is a topic. So just, just we did an MCQ right now. This is their favorite topic. Increase voltage on one will decrease the voltage on the other. This is the concept of potential divider. Similarly, in Kirchhoff topic, this is their favorite question. This is their favorite question. They write down the equation. IR is the voltage across internal resistance. What is IR1? It is the voltage across R1. IR2 is the voltage across R2. You have to update the same screen. You already have copied the circuit. 
you already have copied the circuit, copy this equation. Should we copy all of this? No, already the circuit is copied. Only the equation has to be added in the previous screen. This screen is already there. Or yes. you have sigma E is equal to sigma IR. Under that, copy this equation. Now, second law is the law of conservation of energy because voltage is a form of energy. First law, remember that this is another of their favorite question. First law is the conservation of charge and second law is the conservation of energy. You have to copy this. This is second law. Now, Kirchhoff laws are being discussed. We have important consequences. Kirchhoff law is considered to be uh, the second most challenging topic in our course. Superposition is there in their superposition. There are some topics like uh, double slate and diffraction grating. They are considered to be the most challenging in the exam paper. Then 2D momentum is another very challenging topic. So uh, the syllabus is classified in some topics which are very challenging. They are capable of trapping anyone. So Kirchhoff is one of them. Important consequences of Kirchhoff law is just like the implications of this law because there is no there is uh, there is no much theory in this chapter. Overall, this is a small chapter compared to current of electricity or compared to superposition, which are giant chapters. But compared to that, DC circuit is a small chapter. Now give the heading, important consequences of Kirchhoff laws. Answer. Right. Number one, you have to pay very good attention to these important consequences. As mentioned, this is an implication chapter. If this chapter doesn't have much theory, it is like a manual of uh, circuits. Now, the first law says, sorry, first consequence is there, which I discussed earlier also in my previous chapter. If you connect the cells with plus plus wrong polarity, the EMFs are subtracted and you will find many questions where the polarities are in the same, in the like phase. So you have to copy the first rule, first consequence. Answer. This is the this is the first consequence. This is the first consequence which says if you connect the cells in the wrong polarity, they will 
cancel out each other. Number two. Number two is the second law. The second law, uh, second consequence, I'm sorry. Uh, the second consequence says, the second consequence says, if you connect the cells in plus minus, which is called the right polarity, which we use, the EMFs are added. Now you have to copy this. Answer. This is second consequence. Now see the third one. It's an all-time famous O-level concept, which is now going to be updated for a derivation. Derivations are there in the course, but they are rare. Normally, uh, AS paper is not memory driven, so derivation is a part of memory. We have a concept for parallel circuit resistors in parallel that when resistors are connected in parallel, currents are divided, currents are divided and equated to the sum of the currents. So the current is divided. Look at this. The currents are divided. And the time they reach the other point, the currents are combined. In a parallel circuit, current is divided and conserved. This is called a parallel combination. Now, in a parallel combination, the currents are divided and conserved. So we use a derivation to prove the very famous formula of resistors in parallel. So write number three. Write point number three. Write point number three and uh, copy this circuit When resistors are in parallel, current is divided and conserved. Now look at this derivation. You have to copy this derivation and derivations are always memorized. I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. This is first law. So we put Ohm's law there. As the voltage is the same in parallel, you can take it common and you can cancel it out. You have to copy this. This is a derivation which you have to memorize.
let me know once you have copied it. This formula is all time famous. It was in our O level. It was in our O level physics. And this formula is used to calculate the effective resistance. Effective resistance formula is now derived using Kirchhoff first law. Let me know once you have copied it. Okay. Then we move to our next number four. There are resistors in series. This is an O-level concept. And we want to put derivation for A-level. This is all happening every time. When you find many concepts which are connected with O level and they connected in A level and updated. Now current passes through the resistor R1, R2, R3. There is no internal resistance presently. Now voltage is divided and conserved. It's a loop. Remember Kirchhoff second law is a loop. Now you have to uh, look at this. You have to copy this diagram. Write down number four and after writing number four copy this diagram in series voltage is divided and conserved Done, sir. Right. This is a law. This is a conservation law. And it was, uh, as mentioned in our O level, it is here for a derivation using Kirchhoff second law. Ohm's law says that V is equal to IR. So now you have to look at this according to Kirchhoff second law. V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. V is equal to IR. So you can put IR there and you take common and you can cancel out I. And R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. This is a small derivation based upon the idea that in series, voltage is divided and conserved. You have to copy this. This is 
Kirchhoff second law. This formula is used in O level. This formula was used to get the effective resistance. This formula is used to get the effective resistance across a loop. Now we are moving to our uh, next title. And as this chapter is now about to finish, so you can tell me what chapter the school has started. You can 